Well, good morning. Welcome to Wednesday's Pajama Preaching. It's the 18th of November, and we're looking at Mark chapter 11, verses 15 through to 19. Inside the city, Jesus went into the temple. Far from the peace and tranquility that might be expected, the scene was pandemonium. The outer court was full of traders, making easy money from those who had come to worship. Jesus began to throw them out, overturning their tables and scattering their coins. He blocked those trying to bring in the things to sell, shouting as he did so. Our holy writings say that this temple is to be a place of prayer for all peoples of earth. But you've made it a den of thieves. This hardened the resolve of the chief priests and the law teachers to find a way to dispose of Jesus permanently. They could feel their power waning day by day as the crowds hung on every word that Jesus spoke. That evening, Jesus and his followers went back to Bethany. And we know that in the temple there were the money changers who changed the currency of the day into the temple currency. And there were people who were selling the birds and animals that were there to be used as sacrifice. And I think it sounded, reading between the lines, like a pretty corrupt setup. So, reading from Barclay's commentary, he asked the question, what moved Jesus to such wrath? And he says Jesus was angry at the exploitation of the pilgrims. The temple authorities were treating them not as worshippers, not even as human beings, but as things to be exploited for their own ends. And the exploitation of one human being by another always provokes the wrath of God, and doubly so when it's made under the cloak of religion. Jesus was also angry at the desecration of God's holy place. The sense of the presence of God in the house of God had been lost. Commercialisation of the sacred was violating it. As in the reading, it pandemonium. And I must admit that sometimes in the hubbub before a church service starts, all that noise, I used to find that just quite distracting. And I know people have got to say hello to each other and have some little bit of fellowship. But maybe sometimes we need just to have that moment of peace, stillness before God. And finally, is it possible that Jesus had an even deeper anger? Because he quoted Isaiah 56, 7, and that says, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. All peoples. Yet in that very same house, there was a wall between, beyond which to pass for the Gentile was death. It may well be that Jesus was moved to anger by the exclusiveness of Jewish worship and that he wished to remind them that God loved not just the Jews, but the whole world. And I think we need to take note of that as well, that we are there for all of society, all people. Jesus speaks about everyone coming to him who are weary. And I came up with a hymn that I've not read or sung for a long long time but it just seemed to just seem to make sense when you think about Jesus throwing over the tables and rousing out the people the hymn goes restore O Lord the honor of your name in works of sovereign power come shake the earth again that men may see and come with reverent fear to the living God whose kingdom shall outlast the years. Restore, O Lord, in all the earth your fame, and in our time revive the church that bears your name. And in your anger, Lord, remember mercy, O living God, whose mercy shall outlast the years. Fend us, O Lord, where we are hard and cold. In your refiner's fire, come purify the gold. Though suffering comes and evil crouches near, Still, our living God is reigning. He is reigning here. 
and during this upheaval of COVID and the lack of use of church buildings, the outreach that church can do now through other modes of, of worship, other modes of service. And maybe we are getting that nudge to ask ourselves, what is church? What does church mean to you? And do comment on the video. Do email me. Do let me know. What's your thinking about the church? And is it doing what you want it to do? And more importantly, is it doing what God wants it to do? And is it fitting in with that Isaiah picture of a place for all peoples? Anyway, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And I'll see you on Friday, God willing.